Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about someone I met last year, and since then I have had a few interesting things to share and speak about female nature, especially women coming into Canada from foreign countries and trying to find men to settle and live with. The past year, a woman who was not a Canadian citizen moved to Canada from Europe and spent a year living with a friend of mine and his wife while working odd jobs for money. She has been searching frantically for a husband. She has been hanging around with laborers doing manual labor and construction to see if any of them are interested in her. She would check in on me on Facebook every few weeks to see how I was doing. She was only keeping me informed while she was pursuing other opportunities, so to speak. In any case, I believed that was the last I had heard of her until she decided to leave last fall. But early this year, I learned that she had returned to Canada and was now living with another lady, a mother by herself. I have no doubt that they go out together to clubs in search of men. She has been working really hard to land me for the past three weeks, and it's becoming a little frightening. She was attempting to socialize with me when my friend and his wife asked me over for BBQ. She invited me out a few nights ago. I went only because my friend was the only guy going, and it would be weird if he was the only male going out. She was quite cunning in her attempt to make me feel guilty by creating a scenario in which my friend struggles. She is using bullying like that to coerce me into stepping out. That evening when we met, she actually rubbed her breasts all over me in a way that borders on being unpleasant. She's doing this despite the fact that I informed her friend last summer that I wasn't interested in this woman who can't drive, doesn't speak English, doesn't have a job, and wants to be married to me so she can remain in Canada. But she won't give up. She has three months to stay with the single mother before she has overstayed her welcome and won't be permitted to stay with her again if she returns to Canada. She sends me a photo of a purple pill that she's holding in her hand today and wants me to Google it to find out what it does. The pill's name is clearly printed there. She can look up what it is and what it does online. But since she can't read English, she needs it to be translated. Let's just assume that I am trilingual and can understand what she is saying. But consider this. What does this woman expect? She wants a Canadian man to work for her and serve as a translator for her because she is unable to even drive in her neighborhood. She damaged my friend's car, which she was learning to drive on when she lived there while he was away. The automobile was fixed while he was out at work, and he wasn't aware of it until he returned. Before being married and relocating to Canada, my friend and his wife met three times while living abroad. They have been married for 15 years. Even though his wife doesn't have a job, she manages the household cooking. She is educated, but she just doesn't seem to be that interested in finding a job. She stays and he pays. Despite the fact that they are not parents, if she genuinely left him, she would receive a sizable portion of the income as alimony. He now just gives the impression that he doesn't care. It's a bit depressing. He used to be a totally different cheerful person, but now this 37-year-old lady told me that she would never marry a man to stay in the country, even if she's unquestionably attempting to do so with me. She is attempting to disprove her friend's claim that she is looking to use me. She also tried to make me feel excited by being overly affectionate. Additionally, she continually disrupts my schedule and annoys me. As a result, I begun to get angry when I receive her messages, but I have to maintain good manners. I promised to take her about the province for a day or two when she was only contacting me around once or twice a month, but now I'm beginning to worry that she may be insecure and unstable. She's going to start cracking as the deadline for returning to Europe draws near. She is also aware of the 15 years I spent in long-term partnerships and the fact that I had a strong tendency to fall in love. I think that delights her because she can easily trick a guy who falls in love. Clearly, she regards me as a simple target. She's doing all in her power to catch my attention, but the nicest thing about being the guy is that I actually get to decide whether or not to react. In terms of granting a male consent, a woman does not possess the power. As a result, because he must approach, the initiative empowers the man. Most of the time, women will avoid taking the risk of approaching out of concern for rejection and shame. She is trying everything short of grasping my twig and berries through my jeans with her hands. If I take her on a brief road trip, who knows what she'll attempt to pull off. She is eager to come here and find guys who would give her a better life since she is in need of them. She is aware of that at home, a place she no longer even wants to call home, where nothing is available for her. There are more possibilities available to the guys there who desire younger women. In addition, the majority of the guys don't truly enjoy the same standard of living and access to resources as the people over here. Lady, be cautious since your hypergamy is obvious. Even if I went insane and started seeing her, she would still attempt to monkey branch to some other guy while she's here in Canada. Ultimately, she ends up returning to Eastern Europe and getting a cat to play with. 
According to the local legal system, if I ever got acquainted with a person who had just stepped off a boat, I would be off for years of government aid. When my dad initially immigrated to Canada, receiving assistance required 10 years or more of residency. Now you may get it immediately and have your trusting foreign spouse pay the bill while you engage in extramarital affairs. She won't give up without a fight. She's going to use yet another cunning tactic. I'm guessing, but I have no idea what those may be, so my predictions are only nothing. I wouldn't be shocked if she did something in the car without my consent when we were on our little road trip. This whole situation is absurd since, for the most part, when guys are in their 20s, women don't want to pursue us. Only when we have improved ourselves can we approach them. Only then can we be certain that they find us appealing. We don't really have assets at that age, yet we do have our looks and they go after what we look like. That's when women are at their most sincere. But when they near their thirsty thirties, it's impossible to tell if a woman is drawn to you because of your appearance or because of how your wallet looks. Women make excellent actors, and by the time they reach their thirsty thirties, they have had 20 years to practice for their once-in-a-lifetime role. A part of me finds great joy in observing a lady who spent her adolescence, twenties, and maybe early thirties, believing that it would never come to this. For a very long time, women believed that their emancipation had given them the right to pursue any male they desired. But a large number of women were too ignorant to convince him to commit or get married. Since that is what this is all about, they are currently trapped in circumstances where they are desperately searching for a willing victim. When she wastes her time on me, a man who won't fall for her tactics, she keeps herself away from other guys or, at the very least, spreads out her resources so she won't be able to likely land another person. Sometimes I wonder why I encourage her, but deep inside I know precisely why but even my benevolence for my fellow human beings has its limitations. This is where I draw the line and only communicate with her in one-word responses until she begins to annoy me, which is pretty much what she's doing right now. I considered gaining some feminine affirmation and attention, as well as the closeness, and I believed it was a good idea. I can now clearly see that even that is making me crazy. I'm enraged when I use her in the short term, but if she can't use me or any other man in a long-term relationship, she'll have a breakdown. Watching a lady unable to understand that you are uninterested is just amusing. Women should be aware that, unlike men, who often won't change their minds once provided with an opportunity, women are frequently persuadable after the seventh or tenth time you ask them out. They assume that men must also be this way, which is just incorrect. Feminism appears to be telling them that this divide doesn't exist and that both men and women are the same. This woman doesn't appear to understand my lack of interest as a rejection. Maybe she interprets my lack of interest as me trying to be hard to get because that's what males do these days, according to reports. We act hard to get. I suppose that because women like teasing males, they assume that we do too. While searching for a man with the least amount of damage so she may damage him instead, she keeps being more and more unsettled. This is women empowerment, I guess. It implies that they have the power to wreck their lives and that no one will be able to save them. She wants me to go out this weekend once again. If she somehow gets with me, or some other unfortunate guy, it's her final opportunity to become a parent. Her final opportunity to get married and, in essence, leave her own nation. She attempted to enter the U.S., but the U.S. border agents said that since she doesn't have a job, a spouse, or children, there is no need for her to ever leave the country. And so they think she will stay there illegally. And yet, she is still permitted to enter Canada. That demonstrates how dysfunctional our nation is. We let immigrants from other countries who have no legitimate need to leave Canada, and I'm convinced that many of them stay forever, fading into the background. There are sanctuary cities in the U.S. Canada essentially acts as a sanctuary state. People enter this nation illegally, and we provide them with free housing and welfare funds. We also let visitors to fly directly into Canada without having a job, a family, or any compelling reason to leave the country. My cousins who have visited from abroad have never been granted entrance permits to the United States, but Canada has always welcomed them with open arms. That's it for today guys, hope you liked the video, share your thoughts in the comments section, and stay tuned for more.